Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rose Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our video. The 2024 UFL playoff semifinals are right around the corner. And this season, I haven't even talked about the UFL once all year long because of the fact that last year I did the USFL and the XFL entire season predictions. I followed it week by week. But when it was announced that these two leagues were coming together, I just kind of tapped out. I really wasn't interested in the fact that both of these leagues combined. I thought it was a terrible idea, just like the Sears Kmart merger back in the mid-2000s. I thought that it would more than likely fail. And after one year, I can't really say it has been an absolute failure because the ratings have been a little bit better for the combined UFL than the 2023 USFL and XFL seasons. But if you combine both of those leagues' ratings together, then the ratings were better than the UFL's rating. So I don't know. It doesn't necessarily mean that the UFL is doing all that well, and I don't really see as many people talking about it online, or when you're just going around talking to people. It doesn't seem like that many people care about this league like they did the USFL and XFL, but there's still some people that do really care about this league, and I'm going to go over my predictions for the 2024 UFL playoff semifinals. Even though I haven't really been locked into this league, I have been paying attention to it more recently, and I do think Think that I can have an educated guess of who I believe is going to end up winning these two games. Now, since the USFL and the XFL combined into the UFL, four teams from each league remained, and they ended up forming the USFL Conference and the XFL Conference. So in the USFL Conference Championship, we have the Michigan Panthers and the Birmingham Stallions. Now, the Birmingham Stallions, everybody knows who has watched any bit of USFL action, knows that the Birmingham Stallions are always good, and they're always at the top of the league. And and Skip Holtz, the head coach, he has had them playing great football for three seasons now. Whereas the Michigan Panthers, they have not been a good team the past few seasons since the USFL came back in 2022. They have really struggled to have any type of success. But for the first time since the USFL came back around, they've had a good season. And when you look at the quarterback statistics, the Birmingham Stallions, they have a new face at QB. Adrian Martinez, the former Nebraska and Kansas State quarterback, is the starting quarterback for Birmingham the past couple years. It was two different quarterbacks for the Stallions. But Martinez has done a really good job. He has the third most passing yards in the league. 58% completion percentage is a bit low. But overall, he has done pretty well because he has 15 touchdowns and three interceptions. You can't really complain there. And Birmingham, they did lose a game this season. They're 9-1. and one. They went undefeated in the regular season last year, even though they ended up falling short in the USFL championship game. But still, Birmingham had a great year. And then when you look at Michigan, their two quarterbacks, Quarterbacks have been Danny Etling and EJ Perry. Both of them have had success this season to varying degrees. But I do believe that even with the two QB system that Michigan has had this year, both quarterbacks do not make up what Adrian Martinez has done for the Birmingham Stallions. And on both sides of the ball, Birmingham is still a more formidable team, especially on defense. That's where Birmingham has always had their bread and butter. And that's helped them be able to win as many games as they have had the past few seasons in the USFL. No, it's nowhere near an NFL defense, but it's still pretty solid, and it's going to make them tough to beat. Plus, they're at home because the USFL Conference Championship game and the XFL Conference Championship game, the home team is going to be the team with the better record, so the Michigan Panthers are going to have to go up against that Birmingham Stallions crowd. Do I believe the Michigan Panthers have a shot to win? Yes, I do, because they are a much better team this year than they have been, but Birmingham's favored by six and a half. Birmingham's at home, and Skip Holtz, he's still the head coach of the Stallions, and even though there's some new faces on the team, Birmingham's still a very formidable team, and I think that even if they find a way to lose in the championship game, kind of like they did last year in the USFL, I think that the Birmingham Stallions are at least going to be able to win this game and move on to the UFL championship game with a 28-21 to win over the Michigan Panthers. And a lot of people do agree online as well, because I did a Twitter poll and everybody is picking the Birmingham Stallions to knock off the Michigan Panthers. Now to move on to the other game. In the XFL conference championship game, we got the St. Louis Bat Battle Hawks and the San Antonio Brahmas. And the odds have St. Louis favored by only three and a half, which is basically the home field advantage plus an extra half because the home field advantage is usually just three points, but St. Louis is favored by three and a half. So this game probably will go down the wire. And when you look at the stats for both of these teams, they're pretty even at quarterback. A.J. McCarron, he only played in nine games this season because he did miss one game due to an injury, but he threw for 1,500 yards, had a pretty solid season overall. He had 15 touchdowns 
touchdowns and four interceptions. But I do think it's big that he did miss a game because it was toward the end of the season and he came back and played fairly well in their final game of the season. But there could be a little bit of rust still. And then when you look at the San Antonio Brahmas, they've had a two-quarterback system kind of like the Michigan Panthers with Quentin Dormady and Chase Garbers. And both of them have had varying degrees of success. And San Antonio's had a lot of players around the quarterbacks that have had success this season, kind of like Cody Latimer, the former Indiana Hoosier in college football. Cody Latimer has been one of the best wide receivers slash tight ends in the UFL this season. And San Antonio has a really solid running back room. But the only problem is, is that San Antonio had an injury to Chase Garbers in their most recent game. We don't know if he's going to be able to play in this game against St. Louis. Plus, Cody Latimer, who I already mentioned, he's out for the season. He got hurt in the last game. And the running backs are banged up as well. So that's going to significantly hamper San Antonio's chances to win this game. Plus, St. Louis has a really good home crowd. Everybody talks about the Birmingham Stallions having the best home crowd in the USFL or the XFL. But St. Louis of the XFL, now the UFL, they have a pretty good home crowd as well because St. Louis does not have a professional football team anymore since the St. Louis Rams went out to LA again. And I think that's really aided the Battle Hawks having a good home fan base because people in St. Louis want to support a football team in that area. And AJ McCarron, he is a fan favorite because he was a really good player at Alabama in college. Didn't have a great pro career, but he is still a pretty solid enough quarterback, even for his age now that he is in his 30s. And he has been able to help St. Louis be one of the better teams in the XFL the past two years. But I do think that if San Antonio was healthy and they had their entire roster available, then there's a really good chance that I would pick them to win this game because they have played well this season. But since they're banged up and they don't have Cody Latimer and we don't know if Chase Garbers is going to be able to play, even with A.J. McCarron possibly having some rust, I think that the St. Louis Battlehawks, aided by that home field advantage, are going to be able to squeak out a 27-24 to win over the San Antonio Brahmas to be able to move on to the UFL Championship game to face the Birmingham Stallions. And on Twitter, I actually have asked people who they believe is going to win, and more people are picking the San Antonio Brahmas. Despite the injuries, I still believe that the St. Louis Battlehawks are going to get it done. And even though a lot of people are joking about the UFL, like this person who said, what's the UFL? Of course, he knows what the UFL is. That's why he had the crying face emojis. But I don't think the UFL is doing all that well. It's not like it had a ton of success this season, but it wasn't a complete failure. And hopefully these two conference championship games and the championship game itself will be able to garner a little bit more interest in the league. So possibly the league can go off to a year two and continue to be able to exist in the future since this is now the only spring league in existence. And if this one fails, it's going to be very tough for another spring league to come into existence with all of these previous leagues failing. Eventually, people are going to give up trying to create a new spring league, but we'll have to see what happens. But again, I'm going with the St. Louis Battlehawks and the Birmingham Stallions to move on to the UFL Championship game. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Which two teams you think are going to end up moving on to the UFL Championship game and whether you agree with my picks for who is going to end up moving on to the championship game and how excited you are for these conference championship games and whether you have been locked in to the UFL this season or you're like me and you haven't really paid attention to the league until now. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description and I'll see you next time.